March the 25th. And I would say this is the first day when I've noticed less traffic on the main road outside. There's one car now. It's definitely a reduction, so hopefully people are staying at home. We've decided we're going to make a nest for our Corona Christmas. What have you found in it? Oh, it's just a lump of ginger that I was confused about. Oh. And her family now complete became a happy. Mum and Ben already had this. For yours? I'm going to restrict what? myself with oh. only one veggie. Oh. A oh. lovely t shirt! Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that already mine? No, it wasn't already oh. yours. Oh. I don't mind circles, it's the bamboos I don't like. As you may have noticed, there's a lot less news watching um, and social mediaing at the moment, and more kind of just getting on with life in their own bubble. Um, we had a lovely day yesterday, it was our Corona Christmas. A um, little bit less traffic on the road, seems to be a little bit more yesterday now. The sun has come out, which is great. I'm doing creative things with my hair and makeup each day because I can. Um, I kind of feel like we're just getting our head down now and walking up that hill and then hopefully at some point we'll come down the other side. I think my part in helping what's going on is supporting my friends, looking after my family, looking after my children. Um, I'm putting things on my social media page of ideas, creative ideas that anybody can do at home with things they might have. I think we're all in society finding our little thing that we can do to help. Um, I've offered editing for people as well if they want to put um, pictures up. But I think that's what people are doing. People are just finding out what it is that they can do to help people and and doing that. Yeah, thank God the sun is shining, that's all I can say, even if you're stuck inside, you know, just to see the sun shining in through the window is a massive thing at the moment. <laughs> Quite emotional. Um clapping for friends and family that we know, for Seb and other people that are doing an amazing job. And now it's time for a virtual pub quiz. Anyway, I got eight and you got seven. Last night, thousands of people across the country came out on their doorsteps to applaud the efforts of NHS workers on the front line. We, we haven't started to issue in fines yet, but if people um, continue to, to flout this rule, then, then we will resort to, to, to giving out fines. Some people in the house are really letting themselves go. So talented. They told that you <laughs> I'm filming, Benji! Yay. Have a nice day, thankfully. Today we're having ISO Fest, which we're celebrating with Izzy and her housemates down in Exeter, where she's in isolation. Um, as she's at university and chose not to come back rather than be in isolation with her family she's chosen to be in isolation with her boyfriend and friends which I think probably is the wisest decision well I think it might have been tricky with all of us and I think if I was 21 I'd rather be with my 
friends than my family. Hetty, you've oh. smudged your flowers. I'll smudge them. No, too much football. These are our pots drying out. Are you fed up with everybody being at home so you've had to escape in here? You're like, you got a face paint. You got face painted. Today we are doing business plans for our new business ideas. Hetty, what's your idea? They might steal it. It's all right, my documentary's not going out until all this is over. So in a Dragon's Den style pitch, the children are going to pitch their business ideas to me and their dad. Business plan of making swans. If I can do two of them in five minutes, and then 60 minutes in an hour, how many can I do? You can do 13. 26. No, be 13. Um, I have a question. Uh, what are your projected sales and profit for the next three years? <laughs> what is my business idea? Sewing, drawstring, bags and pin cushion. I don't have business name. What's yours? Your costs. <laughs> What's your projected <laughs> forecast for the next three years? <laughs> A new business venture. ISOFest 2020. Come on. Benji. Appa apparently um Boris has COVID-19. Dunno. He can do though. Such a lot of things that you have to think about and that you don't think about are affected, like hospices. And they were just talking about charities, and of course, charity shops are shut, and charity events are going to be massively affected. It's like I keep thinking of things I can do to help, and like having exhibitions of like ISO art and stuff, and who you help, but there's just too many people, so I don't really know. I don't know, I guess everybody at the end of this has to do what they can. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has become the first world leader to test positive for coronavirus. Health Secretary Matt Hancock has also been diagnosed with COVID-19. The Chief Medical Officer... I'm in my shed mixing ceramics. It kind of looks like I'm going onto the front line. Saturday. Just thought I'd do a bit of filming out the window. It's nice to have had a day off today in my studio. I've spoken to my friends. And now I might go and have a gin and tonic. It's also been reported that today we had our first deaths on the Isle of Wight. Um, two older people and I think they had underlying health conditions. One in their 70s and one in their 80s. Um... So hopefully anybody who's still not taking it seriously on the Isle of Wight might start to do now. Just got our Morrison's delivery. Never have I been so excited by the contents of our fridge. Cheese! ...train to shunt all the carriages around and this is the trailer with a vehicle. What was that, Hetty? My hands are all cracked and they're gonna fall off. What's Look that? this part. Because I washed my hands. I was saying, two weeks in, on our, effectively our lockdown because we started two weeks ago it's actually we're kind of used to it and actually it's not so bad we kind of settled into it and um, in some ways it's quite enjoyable and we have a plan of action for next week just a shame those dastardly children are here <laughs> BBC News.
news has global coverage. Across the UK, the eerie sight of airports turning into parking lots. The entire external European Union border will be closed. Commuter numbers down on normal with people choosing to work from home. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the latest on the coronavirus outbreak with BBC News. It's 8 o'clock and these are your Monday morning headlines. 20,000 ex-NHS staff returned to the service to help fight coronavirus. The figure is revealed by the Prime Minister in a message recorded from isolation. The one thing I think coronavirus crisis has already proved is that there really is such a thing as society. His comments come as England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer warns it could give you six months before life in the UK returns to normal. Well, I don't think it's any great surprise that it's going to be six months before things return to normal. In fact, I was almost um, quite relieved at that because in my head I had it was possibly a year. Um, I suppose it depends what normal they mean. Is it a new normal or is it as we were before? And also somebody should have told Boris Johnson to hold his phone landscape, not portrait. The UK coronavirus death toll passed a thousand over the weekend. On Sunday, it was announced that 209 people in the UK had died in a single 24 hour period. So, Monday, the what's the date, Matthew? 30th. The 30th of March, and the whole Bell household has gone to pot. Benji looks like he's got horns. She's out there in schools. You are fantastic. You do a great job. And my kids love being at school and they love learning. But at the moment, my priority is having a happy house because I've got to be in this house with my children and my husband for potentially months. Now, if you really want me to do Google Classrooms, I suggest you come here and teach them yourself! <laughs> Bit shit. Monday was shit last week. Monday shit this week, trying to get the kids to do work is just disruptive. I don't know. And I think if it's disruptive to me, it's going to be disruptive to everybody. What's better? Everybody has a nice time or everybody has a shit time and they might learn a little bit of English and maths badly because they're at home. Just the size of it. Hopefully the tears are over and we... Are ready to begin. I've had to. You did. You were happy, and then you had to pull that face. Yeah, we'll close the so, Mappy um, attempted Google Classroom work this morning. Um, as I said, I wanted to do some things, and after half an hour of tears and tantrums, I think now he's resorted to my way of home editing which is finding something constructive for them to do that isn't necessarily Google Classrooms. Anybody who wants to criticise my way of doing it, tough, because it's either that or we have a really shit few weeks. And I'm guessing I am not the only one that's thinking that. And I'm really hoping that the teachers are having to put the work up because it's their job and they're being paid. But actually the expectations are for people to keep their mental health good and to keep their family happy and healthy. Can you talk to people on Google Classroom? Yeah. That's good. Done it. How many moves was it? 20. Sorry, I mean gas mask now, I should be in hospital. 
Having a little bit of a binge day, drinking gin, eating cheese, eating Kit Kats. It's half stress relieving and half reward. But I have made an agreement with Sandy that for the same amount of days that we are in lock-in, I will give up drinking when we are not. And a scale of the pandemic taken from the skies high above the south of England this afternoon. Good evening. There are currently 9,000 patients with coronavirus in hospitals across England, which means they're occupying around one in ten beds. One in four doctors are understood to be off sick or self-isolating. An entirely new hospital built in a conference centre from scratch in just a week will be ready to take its first patients in just a few days. The Nightingale Hospital in East London will be ready for 500 coronavirus patients, rising eventually to 4,000, and now confirmed to have died from the virus in the UK. That's an increase of 180 people since yesterday. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has the latest. Just a week ago, it was a giant conference hall with room for a dozen football pitches. Now it's a hospital with intensive care beds and ventilators and ready in a few days' time to receive the first patients. The capacity eventually will be 4,000, and if those beds are used, it'll be the biggest hospital in the world. Sir Simon Stevens, head of NHS England, toured the site at London's ex- ...having an effect and has reduced the number of contacts between us all in the last week. The Chief Scientific Advisor, Sir Patrick Vallance, says he still expects the number of infections and deaths to rise over the next two to three weeks, but the number of infections is not accelerating at the moment, and Sir Patrick urged us all to continue to stay home. Is our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. We've got Oscar Mays, give me a wave. And then we've got Sebi Mays, give me a wave. Stretching into the distance. You're missing your friends, aren't you? But yeah, but you'll be okay, won't you, mate? This could last a lot longer than the Mays family, now daily 5K. They're missing out on so much school, but they are young and I think it's just important to teach them to be resilient, really, and to deal with whatever situation they're faced with. So we can cope. Even the Prime Minister's chief advisor, pictured rushing out of work last week, is now at home with symptoms too. The new government's routine today was a progress report on how the country's coping with the severe limits on our lives in place for a week. This is a united national effort and the spirit of selflessness shown by so many is an inspiration. The chief scientist slides, capturing the huge behaviour changes we've made in the last seven days. Look at how the use of public transport's fallen off, the number of cases of the virus rising, but maybe at a slower rate. The measures are in place, they are making a difference, they are decreasing the contact, which is so important to spread the disease. And we're doing a good job at cutting that down. Now, the reason that's important is because, of course, it then prevents the number of cases. Based on what you know now, are the restrictions working? What we know is that the... Um, ...was closed quite abruptly, um, so it came in quite sad, and I said, what would you up? And so there's an article on TV this morning about people cutting their own hair. Um, and I suppose there's so many things that are making me happy about this. The, the fact that I've been cutting my hair... Um, most of the time, my fringe, I've been um, cutting my family's hair for years now, for about 15 years. Uh, every now and then they go to hairdresser, but I've just learned how to do it, so that's not an uh, issue. Eating random bizarre things and lentils and like the cookery programme the other night, um, I've been doing it for years. It's, it almost feels like I've done a lifetime of training for isolation and COVID-19. <laughs> it's just funny. But on the on the flip side, I do really feel for people who 
you know, do go out and get the nails on every week and, and have the hair cut and waxes and things because this is just going to be even harder for them. So I do appreciate that, you know, and kids that have McDonald's all the time, you know, to suddenly have that taken away, which is a bit of normality out of their life, must be really hard, really hard. So although, you know, it's, I'm a bit flippant about it, it is hard for a lot of people. Just going to have a little check on our eggs, see if there's any development, and check our seeds. These are seeds that we planted last week, I think, or maybe the first week, but they're just starting to come up. That's a courgette, I think, and that little one that is a tomato. I don't think we've got any chives as yet. Oh, we've got a basil, one little basil. And this is our very lumpy compost because it's our own compost because we didn't have any. Today we resorted to printing off crosswords and word searches because that's what they like doing. They seem happy for the moment so I might just sneak off. I might sneak into the back room and call Sandy. enough. I think the soda will fizz and the bath bomb will like dissolve. And you reckon it would, the, the... the bicarbonate of soda be more fizzy and then the bath bomb be less fizzy. Okay, do you want to do it at the same time or separately? Okay. Just separately, you go first. Turn around. Just spin. So Matthew's been hunting and gathering food from all sorts of places, from Amazon, from um, local food suppliers, uh, all sorts. Um, so he's bulk, bulk, bulk bought yo-yos. Uh, and everything comes in, it comes into our little storage room where we put it into its own quarantine for as long as possible. And then we also w are wiping everything down with an antibacterial wipe. It's funny how the sun's come out. After all that rain we had beginning of this year, I think, although it's frustrating for some, it keeps the spirits up. By any chance, watching Call the Midwife? Mm, there's a surprise. Yeah, okay. To do the, what kind of average is that? The mean average. I'm probably close to mummy's, too much. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably close to mummy's. Okay. Benji's doing the 30 day Lego challenge that my Canadian cousin sent us. Oh my gosh, you're not actually watching Call the Midwife. Every life lost to the invisible killer represents a tragedy. And we now know that no one is completely safe. While most of those it claims are the elderly and the vulnerable, Mohammed Mukhtar today told us about his family friend Ismail, just 13 when it took him. There were no underlying symptoms, there were no underlying illnesses that could have even made anyone suspect that he's in real danger. Ismail Mohammed Abdul Wahad's large family in South London today described him as a loving son, brother and nephew, saying his smile was heartwarming. He was always gentle and kind. Well, seeing normally one of the busiest tourist 
destinations in the world. No traffic to in Dubai, shopping center of the Middle East, its normally busy streets abandoned, the usual hordes of late night browsers, a distant memory. This is Paris, and the Eiffel Tower, of course, still lit up in France's darkest of hours, and where all is eerily quiet. This is Madrid's central square, the Puerto del Sol, where the lockdown is now total and most streets are deserted. And this, of course, New York, arguably the heartbeat of global capitalism. If we have never witnessed anything quite like it, the economic consequences are as yet unknowable. No wonder then that in Washington, the president has prepared his country, which is already experiencing distressing scenes for what he called the roughest two or three weeks it has ever had. In New York, these are the distressing scenes outside some of the hospitals. There is little dignity as the state grapples with a mounting death toll that is tonight nearing 2,000. Hospital staff are under immense and growing pressure, fearing most of all what lies ahead. Dr. Eric Brutinger, the president is adopting a new, much braver tone, warning Americans to brace for what lies ahead. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. And then hopefully, as the experts are predicting, as I think a lot of us are predicting after having studied it so hard, we're going to start yeah, seeing sure some real life really hard. in the tunnel, but this is going to be a very painful, very, very painful two weeks. And it's really odd to me. So I'm just off to bed and it's just gone 10 o'clock. And it's really depressing. On one hand, it's hard day in, day out, finding things to amuse the children and keep them happy and not to show them that you're worried. But on the other hand, they're what keeps you going. I think I identify with people in worse positions too much. It's almost like I have too much empathy. And for the people who are terminally ill or got serious conditions and and I think I'm fearful and you know, have real lows and I think what it's like for them. It almost feels like, you know, some kind of phobia that for the rest of your life you'll be worried that this will happen again. And you don't know whether things are ever going to recover, whether charities are ever going to be there at the end of this to pick up the pieces. Anyway, tomorrow is another day.